Now today, I'm going to show you a special skill that I have learned over eight weeks in the octagon, which is where your ant queen and potentially small colony will reside. This Campanotus queen is now completely and fully set up in a brand new test tube. Should you be creating an ant colony of your of your own of yourself, uh, that's that's a different thing. If you're creating an ant colony of yourself, I am uh, obligated to report you to the FBI. Ants. These minuscule marauders are the backbone of many ecosystems across the globe. Inhabiting every continent excluding Antarctica, these tiny titans have adapted to all sorts of challenges and obstacles. From tropical rainforests to barren deserts, these animals have been able to become one of the most successful terrestrial animal groups in our planet's history. Now today, we are going to be looking at how to properly set up one of the most important types of ants, the queen. Let's take a look at how you can start your own ant queen off on the right foot. Welcome friends. Welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife and welcome to perhaps one of our only how-to videos. Yes, that sounds right. One of our only how-to videos. Now today, I'm going to show you a special skill that I have learned over eight weeks in the octagon. Today, I'm going to show you how to properly set up or transfer an ant queen to a test tube setup. Now, test tube setup is a great first setup for a freshly caught queen that allows for her to have the moisture and humidity of an underground environment while also allowing the keeper, in this case myself, to be able to view her development, to view the eggs, to view the larva, to verify that she's fertile, and to verify that she's doing okay. So, I've got a beautiful little Campanotus queen here. She is in an old test tube. Her water reservoir has dried up. There's some icky mold, that kind of black stuff in there. So we are going to remove her and set her up in a brand new test tube. So I'm gonna show you all how to do that, how to do that properly, and how to make your ants very, very happy. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, folks, step one, which was actually done off screen, Wash your hands, okay? You may not realize it, but your hands are coated in feces, mold spores, bacteria, and all sorts of things that can lead to contamination in your test tube. Now, of course, you're not gonna be able to totally negate contamination as your ant queen herself may have certain pathogens or spores or things on her, but you do wanna make sure that you're already starting off on the good foot by washing your hands. And of course, step 1.5, sterilizing your utensils. So here I've got a pair of tweezers. Uh, you can also use a butter knife, a chopstick, or anything really. This is going to be used for pushing our cotton swab down the test tube. So all you wanna make sure is that whatever utensil you're using here is going to fit into the mouth of your test tube. This is quite a large test tube. Uh, many test tubes will not fit this wide of a thing, uh, but as long as it's got a, a good enough blunt base, you don't want it to be too sharp. You don't wanna pierce through your cotton. You just wanna gently press it into position. And I will show you what position that will be. So. We've sterilized all this equipment and I'll sterilize it again for you so you know what that looks like. And then we will get on to setting up our test tube before we move in our queen. So let's move on to step two. All right, folks, step two. You're going to take your beautiful test tube here and I've got some spring water. This is actually RO water that I put into this water bottle. Man, that lid is really on there. Who are they trying to keep out of this stuff? 
Now it's important that you use spring water. You don't want anything with chemicals. You don't want anything with uh, harmful junk in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly pour this about 50%, maybe 40% full here. So you can see good water reservoir. Uh, it's nice and uh, large. And this is because this is gonna be the lifeblood of your test tube colony or nest. This is gonna be a great way to keep moisture levels high so that your queen doesn't dry out, so that she has access to water by drinking it through the cotton ball. So now we're gonna move to our cotton ball. I like to use these organic super jumbo cotton balls. Really any pure cotton ball will work. Uh, sometimes you may have to rip this, but like I said, this is a very large test tube. So I'm just kind of twisting it in there, kind of packing in so it's very flat. So you're gonna get to the point where you're looking at something, I wanna get all these kind of wispies out of the way. You're gonna get to something that looks very much like this, right? I've got my, my cotton, a little bit of air here, and my water. Now this is the most important action of this entire process. So I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna set this here. And I'm gonna sterilize my cotton pusher. Because that's crucial. So here's a little alcohol prep pad. For my little beauty makeup people. Alcohol prep pad. Doesn't matter what brand, it just needs to be able to sterilize your, your thing that you're pushing your cotton ball down with. I'm just gonna quick wipe all this down. Great, great, great. So it'll evaporate very, fairly quickly, completely demolishing all germs or bacteria, or most. Now we're gonna pick right back up. So take a look, this is the key component of your founding nest. My intention is I'm going to push this little bit of cotton fairly quickly down into this reservoir. Now what I wanna do is basically stop right before this water level. I don't wanna push it all the way through the water because that water will push through the cotton and leave it very wet and can actually lead to flooding this chamber, which is where your ant queen and potentially small colony will reside. And you don't want that because uh, ants usually aren't great swimmers and don't wanna lay their eggs in standing water. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna push this cotton ball down and I just wanna have it just the tiniest bit damp without going under this water level. All right, so here we go. Now you're going to want to push this cotton swab fairly quickly uh, because if you do it too slow, you're gonna trap air bubbles in here and that's gonna prevent the water from being able to travel through this cotton swab at the rate that you would like it to. So we're gonna push it down real quick here. So, whoop, ah, oh, perfect. All right, so you see I've stopped at this water level, maybe a little too far in, but for the sake of today's video, I'd say it's right on the border of being good. So now we're gonna, we're gonna end up with something looking very much like this. We've got our water reservoir, we've got our cotton. Now take a look. That cotton is keeping that water from coming into this main chamber, which is excellent. That's what we want. We don't want water coming in to our ant space. So now that we've got this little container, it's time for us to switch over to getting out our lovely ant queen. Now this is a beautiful, beautiful Campanotis queen or carpenter ant, and you can see that she's quite large in comparison to my finger. She's a good size. This is a, a good large size ant. Now what I want to do is sometimes you can you can be a little more passive in transitioning uh, your ant queens over, but for the sake of today's video, I want to kind of coax her out into this container. Oh, come on. She's holding on to that cotton. Now you're going to have to use the, uh, the tweezers for a different reason. You never want to really grab your ants. I just want to kind of get her to where she's letting go of, oh, well, there she's going to bite onto my tweezers. Oh, careful. Some of these ants are very heavy, so they can 
Boy, she's really gripping onto, oh, there she comes. She fell right out. It's important not to do this too high above the ground, lest you damage your ants. I want to be very gentle with her. So she had a nice soft landing onto our paper towel. Now here, I'm going to transfer her over. Uh, you can use another test tube for this. You can use a larger container and l gently tap her into it. But you see now, I'm just kind of letting her find her way. She's kind of getting startled. I'm slowly kind of creeping it down to the end. I don't want to pinch any of her legs or antenna. All right, great. Now she's fully in the tube. At this point, I'm gonna grab a fresh cotton ball. That one's kind of big. Fresh cotton ball. And while she is at the bottom of the tube, I'm going to go ahead and push this little cotton ball into blocking the entrance. All right, sometimes they take a little while to kind of form into the space that they're filling. And there we go. This Campanotis Queen is now completely and fully set up in a brand new test tube. Once again, take a look at how nasty this old one was. Full of mold, no more water reservoir. She was getting quite thirsty. I was having to give her water in a dropper um, so that she wouldn't uh, dehydrate and die. So now she's in a much better container, a much better test tube nest. And you can see here now, she has water if she needs it. She's got that moisture in there. She can still get air through this cotton ball. And now she's going to begin laying her eggs. It's a little cool right now. A lot of these ant queens are going through um, kind of a winter stasis um, in which they kind of hunker down. They don't really reproduce all that much. Uh, but since this test tube was so nasty and no water in there for her, I decided it was prime time to go ahead and move this lovely lady over. So that is the simple and easy task of creating a test tube nest for your ant queen. So she's very happy now. She's just moving around. Let me wipe some of this off so you can see. I've got my thumb thumbprints all over this glass. There we go, nice and clean. Put her on this white paper towel so you can see her beautiful kind of rusty red orange kind of color. Yeah, I could probably shine a little bit of a light on there. Whoa, too bright. There we go. She's a very nicely colored ant, very orange, very pretty. Definitely deserving of a clean home. Now, this type of setup works great for all types of ants, but it's very important that you know what type of ants you're working with. This works best for claustral species, which means that the queen is kind of hunkered down by herself. She doesn't really need to eat a whole lot um, before she has workers. Um, and this is also great for sugar and protein feeding ants. You don't wanna put any type of fungus growers or things like that in these test tube nests as they can uh, have direct competition with their own um, fungus, you know, if there's any types of pathogens and things in this cotton. So that is the simple and easy way to create a test tube nest for your ant queen. Uh, this works once again for all types of ants, Campanotis, uh, Laceus, Solenopsis, uh, all of your typical uh, claustral ants that you'll run into, and can also work uh, as beginning founding nests for semi-claustral species like Ponderini tribe and things like that. You just wanna make sure that you're including some type of substrate medium in this chamber uh, so that those species of ants that require substrate to spin a cocoon in order to turn into a, an adult, uh, from their larval stage to adult, uh, they have that medium to spin that cocoon. Uh, otherwise, uh, they won't do so well. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned how to create a test tube nest. Um, this, again, is a very simple and easy way to keep your ants at home without having to do too much and an easy way to keep a great and watchful eye on them while they're in this most sensitive stage of creating a founding colony. Now, I will mention, 
ant queens have a varying survival rate depending on species. You can set up an ant queen perfectly and she just wasn't one of the ones that was gonna survive. So don't beat yourself up. Make sure that you try and sterilize everything the best you can. And honestly, set them up and leave them be. Um, very, very important that you leave these animals in a dark, cool space where they can feel comfortable, where they can start laying their eggs. If you're taking them out, rattling them around and, and, and messing with them all the time in a well-lit space, uh, they can become very stressed out and they can eat their eggs or their larva, set back their production a whole lot. Uh, but that's the simple way of setting up a beautiful little ant queen. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna try and include some more ant content this year and maybe some more how-tos. So stay tuned for that. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications if you found this video interesting. Buy our merch. I'm actually wearing a sweatshirt of our merch, but I'm also wearing an ant shirt underneath it. If you like ants, this is the beautiful Mermesia nigrisincta. Very pretty Australian bull ant. One of my favorites. Be sure to check those out. The link is in the description below. It's also on our store page on our channel. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful should you be creating an ant colony of your, of your own, of yourself. Uh, that's, that's a different thing. If you're creating an ant colony of yourself, I am obligated to report you to the FBI. So do not be cloning miniature versions of yourself in order to create a rugged but effective caste system in which you are hunting prey and gathering sugars to feed larval versions of tiny humans. If you're doing that, this video is not for you. No video is for you. You belong in a penitentiary in the middle of the ocean. But if you're a normal person or perhaps a curious person who's interested in starting to keep ants but you don't know where to start, easy as grabbing some test tubes off of a uh, lab supply uh, store online or, or at, a, at a local test tube warehouse. Uh, cotton balls are pretty readily available. Uh, alcohol swabs are readily available. Uh, little plastic Tupperwares and things like that are readily available. Um, sorry to make this video in the midst of winter. Wow, this is a really long outro. Sorry to make this video in the midst of, of winter. Typically, Ant queens are gonna be flying out during heavy rains throughout the warmer months of the year. So wherever you are, spring, summer, and early fall are gonna be your best chances of finding specific species. Uh, if you're not sure what species are in your area, iNaturalist, uh, AntWiki, AntMaps.org are all great resources to use to figure out what you just might be looking for. But I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you, if you used it or if you think you may use it, or if you think you know someone who think they might use it in the future, and have a great day. And hopefully, you'll be able to get some ant queens yourself. So, toodaloo, salutations, au revoir, auf Wiedersehen, and I will see you next time.